Okay. Welcome. So just getting a few technology things set up and we will begin. Wow. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. So we're going to start in just a few minutes. So as we arrive in the space together, whether you're on the recording or whether you're going to be listening to this live, just inviting you to really get into a comfortable place right now, moving around, getting, adjusting your clothes, making sure your body can be at ease and that you have a drink nearby. And if you don't have it with you already, this is a good time to go and get some to go and get a piece of paper and a pen. And great, I can see you there. Uh, you're welcome to have your video on or you can have your video off, whatever works for you. Hi, 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 welcome. And I'm not sure how many people are gonna join the call today live, but there is definitely some people that are gonna jump on. So we're just going to arrive together, just take a couple of minutes, just arriving. So getting comfortable, getting your camera set up, getting whatever you need to do done and arriving into the space. Beautiful. So you might want to move your body around a little bit, see if there's any stretching, any moving that your body wants to do. This um, time together is really about embodiment. So anything that we do even now in these moments, we're just like listening to your body and just seeing what does my body wish to do. And just giving a little bit of space for that. Maybe it's some little movements of the hands or feet or shoulders or whatever that might be, and inviting you to slow that movement down a little bit so just so that you have the consciousness of the movement. So maybe just slowing it down a little. Inviting you to come into your body. So that might be sort of starting from the outside or feeling a sense of the air around you, its temperature. And then starting to come closer in. You may wish to close your eyes. That would be, that would be good. I'm going to start each call with a little meditation. So I'm just going to guide us in now. And then we will dive in to this beginning. So yay, I am so excited to be here with you all. So... All right, so starting to bring that awareness closer in towards your body. So maybe starting to notice really your skin, the outside of your skin and all the fabric that is touching it or the temperature on the outside. And then starting to bring your awareness closer inside your body. So bringing your awareness to your belly, your lower belly, and seeing if you can invite your breath to come all the way into your belly. And you can try breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathing into your belly. Seeing how much you can relax your jaw on the out breath. Just inviting it to soften. And perhaps feeling other parts of your body soften as you do so.
And noticing your sit bones on the chair and perhaps moving your body just a little bit from side to side, really feeling that connection with your sit bones and the muscles that connect through your pelvis. You could even think of it like a bowl where you have your pelvis and there's a sling of muscle that connects. So maybe as you move your awareness a little bit from side to side, seeing if you can notice any muscles moving. It's really bringing your awareness down into your body, the pelvis being our center of gravity and our connection down to the earth. Great. And then bring your awareness deeper inside your pelvis now that you have a sense of being there. See if you can bring yourself to a place that's about halfway between your belly button and your perineum, so the muscle between your vagina and your anus, about halfway, and towards the back is your womb space. See if you can bring your awareness there. And it doesn't matter if you can't get that precise. It's not about being exact. It's more about your intention. And just seeing if you can bring your awareness there. And then from that place, you can imagine that you're growing a root down into the earth that goes from this womb space down and out through your perineum. And it travels down into the earth. You may even notice warmth as you visualize this, or you might see or imagine whatever works for you as far as creating this connection downwards into the earth. You can imagine it growing down and down and down and down and down, maybe like a beam of light down and down and down into the earth. And it, as it moves through the layers of rocks and soil and lava and all of the layers of the earth, you notice this white light at the center of the earth. And you're moving further and further and further towards it, down and down and down and down. And this root meets this core of the earth. And it's like you're plugging in. You're plugging directly in. And as you do so, you may feel a surge and some energy through your body. You can imagine or invite that to happen as you plug into the earth. And as you breathe, every breath breathes up this root from the core of the earth into your body. Your body is becoming more and more alive and vibrant as it's connected down into the earth with every breath, this like wave of energy and vibrancy. It may even look like glitter or stars coming into your body, filling up your body. And as you're plugged into the core of the earth, you're also plugged in to all of the other people, both connected in this group and all the other women on the earth. The earth is our power. The descent downwards is the power of woman. The earth is my body. And you can let go of any technique and just take a moment to rest in your body. Just notice what it is like. Great. 
Great. And then whenever you're ready, I'm inviting you to come back into the space. And I'm going to start just by welcoming in this like journey together. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And you're all so, so welcome here. And I really am calling in for you over this time together that you mm, that you are acknowledging how pre precious it is, you know, carving out like time for self to just focus on like self and body is really really precious so i'm really celebrating acknowledging honoring that for you i mean that's awesome <laughs> it's like yay it's huge right so over this time together it's going to be intensive at times it's going to bring stuff up likely it's going to um, be also really transformational it'll be whatever it is that you wish it to be and more and you're going to walk away with, with practices that you can do like again and again. And as we do all of the practices, I really invite you to use the like law of adaptation. So that means like take what you take what you um, what resonates with you, and you can throw away bits that don't. It's totally up to you to to listen to your intuition in that way and and follow. And also to notice if there's something that you feel really resistant to that might also be an opportunity like the biggest opportunity there so really noticing that so your body is this most like incredible instrument <laughs> it's like we can really learn to play it and it takes practice like anything else and the body hmm, to be able to really be present enough in the body to play it is like the practice all of its own so it's even, it's not really the technique, it's more about that ability, like practicing this ability of like coming home and noticing, coming home and noticing. So we're intrinsically erotic, you know, our whole bodies are like covered in these incredibly delicious nerve endings. We've got special spots inside our vagina that um, create different orgasmic states, like just different places. <laughs> and we... Are, in my opinion, we're like this living like miracle. And I believe that the erotic energy is like holy divine energy in the body and is actually a gateway to your divinity and to your power and to the most sacred expression of life on this like planet is through this allowing this life force into your life. Um, so I'm going to be sharing with you like steps that I've used with many, many clients to take them from um, places of like total like numbness and frustration to the most incredible orgasms of their life and the most incredible experiences of connection uh, with another of their life. So these uh, practices have that potential within them. And... And also, it's also about this like time together is really about like resetting to pleasure. So that is, I think it's an ongoing like potential challenge for anyone is to have this like thing about working hard versus like choosing pleasure and how to actually create a life where we are able to bring more and more pleasure into all of those aspects, even if they appear to be like hard or work, <laughs> like how can we cultivate that? So that's the main like intention for calling it the pleasure reset. So that's why, what I want to really call in. So I've got a few things I just want to mention as far as like being in the group. So I've got these agreements. I'm not going to read them all out, but just um, being aware that in the group space that anything that is shared here is confidential and to really um, honor that and uh, don't like share or repost anything that anybody else says or um, I will open up a Facebook group for us today as well and if you know anything that's shared in there is for your eyes only and for your own um, experience only so you're welcome to share your your own experience with whoever you choose but we really want to make this space like the sacred space. So that's really important for all of us. And you really create your own reality. So you are 100% responsible in the space. So you are responsible for any success that you have. 
and for what practices, how often you choose to participate, all of that. And as I said before, like sitting out things that don't feel aligned for you, use your discernment, um, but don't uh, be fooled by the sneaky tricks of your ego, <laughs> which may try to pull you away. So um, hearing and listening to your own inner wisdom in the form of messages from your body is a really key part of this work. So messages might come from sensation, they might come from inspiration to move or to do with you, be with your body in a certain way. Um, you might also receive images or verbal messages. So I'm really inviting you to practice like listening throughout this month together to see how much more listening you can do and see what unfolds from that. And listening with the ears of your heart and speaking from your heart is going to be really important too. So um, really noticing how things touch you and how that how you may wish to be expressed from this place. And anything else that I want to mention there? Yeah, well, you're here because you've created this opportunity. So let's go you. That's awesome. So celebrating that. And, you know, being an active participant in the process is is how transformation happens. Like sitting here and listening to lessons is is like a part, is like this much, but it's like the, what you do with it is the is the like juice basically. So um yeah, asking questions is great. If you have any questions, that's a really great way to like inquire and make things happen to go forward for you because that's you, you know, you're that's a deeper level of listening that's going on and inquiry. So that's great if questions come up. And we're going to be like celebrating a lot, celebrating, witnessing. Yep. So, yay, <laughs> you're here. So, so good. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about resistance because uh, that, is a, that is a big part of um, what will come up along the way. So, resistance can be really sneaky and resistances are always there. When you step into something as big as working with your sexual self, they are totally like there. It's the deepest levels of self that um, become our current expression of sexuality, right from the, the moment that we're like born, we're getting wired and coded in a certain way. So when you start to work with yourself in this way, you're really working with really, really deep layers. And at different stages of evolution, they're going to show up in different ways. But if you're unaware of your resistances, they're, they're going to like pop up and like bite you in the ass and they're just going to like totally sabotage you, you know? <laughs> they're like playing around in the background. And if you're not aware, then that's what will happen. So, um, so right here, right now is the beginning. I'd like you to notice actually even in this moment, do you have any resistance, like even in this moment, like what is coming up right here, right now? And if you've got pen and paper with you, just noting that down. It might be something like, oh, this is going to be so much work, or I don't really know if I really want to be in another like program, or uh, what if I don't do it the right way? Um, what if I just discover that I can't change? Um, or it might be something totally different, but if you do, awesome. Might want to note that down, just taking a moment and being like, what is actually coming up for me right now? Cool. Okay, so resistance actually isn't a bad thing. It's actually totally awesome to have resistance because it means that you're taking the experience seriously and there'll always be some kind of fear coming up if you do. So if you don't have any resistance, that's also totally cool and you're just like really excited, ready to go. Don't worry, it doesn't mean that you're not taking it seriously, but just being aware that if it does come up, you don't need to push it away. It's about embracing it. And it's, yeah, embracing, holding, loving, noticing. And actually in that process, what tends to happen is it will transform, but we want to do that without like trying to make a change. We're just really noticing what comes up. So just notice throughout this time, like what is actually coming up for me? What is the things that are getting in the way? What are my typical stories? I'm too tired. I'm 
oh, I don't know if I can be bothered. I'm not going to get anything. I don't know. Whatever it might be. Might even be resistance to me as like a teacher. You might be like, oh, I don't even know if I want to do this with her now. Or it could be anything coming up for you. But for whatever reason, you've chosen to be here. So this may be some of your... Um, big growth opportunities and seeing how you like project things outwards onto others and what is, um, yeah, what is possible for you to transform in this space. So uh, Rebecca Sharman is a woman, I sometimes read her um, astrological like full moon reports and I've written down a quote which she wrote, which is, fear is only false expectations altering reality. So don't let your self-doubt and perceived limitations stop you from moving forward courageously and fearlessly, which I thought was great. So it's just false expectations. Expectations are like the, the, the hell that we create in this lifetime on this earth for ourselves, basically. Yeah. So why are you here? What is it that you would like for yourself by the time we complete what is it that you would like why are you here so take a moment right now and write that down and put in as many details that are necessary you might want to write down your feelings um, for example i want to have spiritual sexual experiences that feel really beautiful and have a deep sense of connection with my partner or um, I want sex to be a priority in my life or whatever it might be, but really th think about the thing, like why you're here and like the feeling around it. I'll just give you another minute to write a little bit more if you want to just tune in with. Okay. And what are the potential obstacles that could get in your way or have been getting in your way already? Just write down, just take a minute just to write a few down, what you can think of. What kind of things get in the way of having that which you desire already? Be radically honest.
Okay. So based on what you want by the time we complete and knowing what gets in the way, I would like you to set an inner intention for yourself. So, um, you know, how it is that you want to show up for this course. For instance, is it about showing up even when you feel crap or you're finding it hard to do the practice or is it about doing the practices even when you have resistance or is it about bringing playfulness to the practice or or to your experience with this course like what is the inner intention for yourself that you want to set And once you've got clear on that, take a moment to place a hand on your heart or your belly or both. And take a moment to make it really important to you. So bring it into your body on a cellular level so that you carry it and walk with it during our time together. So taking your breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Into your heart. Hold it and then breathe it out into your solar plexus. Hold it and breathe it out into your womb space. Hold it and breathe it out. Okay, wonderful. So, so we're going to dive into doing a bit of teaching together, a bit of learning together, and, and then we'll have some time after that for some questions and some sharing and with whoever is on this call together. And if you have any questions at any time, you can also pop them up in the chat box. If you have any questions like right now as we're talking, that's, that's great. You can pop them in. Um, actually, it would be great if you wanted to pop in anything, your intention or um, for yourself for this course. If you feel inspired and feel like sharing that, then please do pop that in now as well. Drink. Stay hydrated. Vagina lubrication likes hydration too. <laughs> Great, so we've had one intention come in is to keep going, to persevere with patience and playfulness. And another one is to always show up and do the work and don't buy into resistances. Awesome. Powerful, powerful intentions. Patience, playfulness, show up, show up. <laughs> yeah. So you now that you have that in your body, it might be great to even just take a moment and really feel that, like feel the expansion of your body. And you can even stand up if that feels better. If you want to just like fully get that into your body and feel that power of that intention that you're setting for yourself. Just take a, we'll take two minutes to stand like this.
Okay, one more minute. So just let your arms stretch, feel that breath, that expansion in your whole body, all the way down into your roots, your feet, the earth, and all the way up. And it's great if you feel like moving or however you want to be. It's really feeling that like, woohoo, it's like you cross the finish line. It's like, yeah, done it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Notice how you feel. Notice how your body feels. Feel perhaps energy in your body. Allowing that joy to come in. So, 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 so today is a beginning what I would love to do is to teach you a, a practice to do for this next week and um, yeah and really allow this beginning and hmm, is there anything else that needs to be shared so the first aspects the aspects that we're going to focus on throughout this month are around really having your mind be really supportive of your whatever you desire in your life so and in particular whatever you wish to enjoy sexually so at the moment um or, well always our mind is like the constant the constant like challenge it's like the it's like the little like creature on the shoulder that's <laughs> just like popping up all the time and it's got like all this stuff to say and and we want to really have its like support and be part of you and have your body and your experience of pleasure be very much from this body experience and not from the from the mind not needing the mind place to sort it out actually experiencing fully through your body so we have um, ways of reassigning the mind something useful to do and I wish to give you a tantric practice today that you can do and always using the law of adaptation to make it suit you, but also inviting you to, yeah, to try it out. So I'm going to guide us through the practice. And then after we do it, we will have an opportunity to write down the steps and um, ask any questions about the practice. And the, and the purpose of doing these practices is really just like getting practiced with like giving your mind something else to do so that it can support you. And that this practice is a self-pleasure practice because when you have time for yourself, this is like the, this is a space where you can like learn and like rewire and change your responses. And then what happens when you come together with a partner, you have this new experience already in your body and that allows you to, to drop in all the amazing new ways. So yeah, let's begin. So it's got, um, it's got a number of steps. I'm just going to get a timer out because with a tantric practice, it's really useful to have a timer so that you have a container of how long you're going to be doing something. Um, and then you can just relax and do the practice. So I like using this app called IQ Clock. Spout, how's it spout? I and then QI and Clock. That's my like app. I can put it in the chat if you want. And I just set up on there these like five minute intervals. So you set it up where you do five minutes and then you put 10 minutes and then 15 minutes. And then you have these five minutes. So we're going to do something for 20 minutes. And, um, and you can also do it for 20 minutes or you could, if you felt like 20 minutes was going to be too much for you to create the space at the moment, you could shorten it. Maybe you could make it three minutes every section. But finding the time that's actually like realistic for you to do a practice rather than um, setting yourself up for something which you're <laughs> maybe not going to be able to com complete. So yeah, so sitting, sitting something that works for you. So, okay. 
So we're starting with this. It's kind of, it's got a number of steps, which you think I might be a bit complex, but actually the more we give our brain something to do, the, the easier it is to just be with our own pleasure. So this is a practice for deepening connection to self. And it is actually a ritual that was, uh, and I was initiated into many, many years ago as one of my initial practices with Tantra. And it's something that you can do for 14 days every day, for 14 days. That's like the ideal, but let's, we're going to work with this next week. So we're just seeing if you can create 15 or 20 minutes for yourself a day over this next week. So I think most people can do that, even if it is like locking the bathroom door for 15 minutes or something that you do. And you can try and find the time of day that works for you. Or maybe you have to set your alarm for 15 minutes earlier. I don't know. Whatever you have to do to work that one out to find your, notice your resistances. Okay, so let's start by closing your eyes. And you know, imagine that you're breathing in through the center of your head and down inside your body to your belly. And then up, when you breathe in again, you're breathing up outside your body, back up to your center of your head and then like back down again. So we're breathing in through the center of your head, down to your belly. And then breathing out through your belly and up to your head. And you might actually imagine you're breathing actually further down. So like all the way down to your perineum. And as you breathe out, the air is coming out through your perineum and then back up to your head. So breathing in. Breathing out. And just find your own rhythm with this. So you're breathing down inside your body. So you might imagine that you're breathing through the core of your body. And you're just imagining or intending You might want to also try breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. So mouth, um, when you breathe out through your mouth, you're allowing your jaw to relax, your pelvis to relax. And you're taking yourself from like a, the normal waking state where you might breathe in and out through your nose. That would be the healthy way to breathe. You're taking yourself into a different state in the body. And as your mind wanders, you can just come back to your body. One more minute.
Okay. Now the next stage is to do the same, but now breathing in through your heart and down to your your lower belly, your genitals, your pelvis, and then out breath the same, coming up outside your body, at the front of your body, and then back in through your heart. And you can bring as much energy or vigorousness to the breath as you wish. So it might be quite vigorous. You might notice your body moving a little bit with the breath. You can let that happen as well. One more minute.
Great. Now we're just going to focus your attention and awareness inside your belly. I'm just going to do that for a minute. We're just having the breath inside the belly and the pelvis. So you're breathing in and out into that space. Perhaps feeling warmth. Really cultivating the energy in that place. Now you're in your lower belly, you're going to start breathing up your spine. It's called raising samana. So the breath up the spine. So you're going to come right deep into your lower belly, into that womb space. And as you breathe in, I want you to bring that breath up your spine, up to the top of your head, and then release up outside the head, like as if it's a, like a fountain out of that, that sort of soft spot at the top of your head. So you're letting the energy come up and out. We'll do that for, for three and a half more minutes. So it's like a shower that flows around you and lands back on you. And you imagine you're going up the place, a channel that's like just inside your spine, just on the inside, and there's a channel there that the energy can flow up. You might even imagine it like a tube, a tube going up, and you can, might be the size of a coin, or it might be the size of an apple. Noticing how your posture changes as you bring that energy up the spine. Remembering to, remembering to relax your pelvic floor as you breathe. Softening, opening. Perhaps bringing a bit of a smile to your lips, feeling the, the joy and being in your body. Connecting with your body.
Okay, and now is the time to stand up and move the energy. So I'm going to invite you to stand up with your eyes open or closed and allow your body to move, allow all spontaneous movements. Let it wriggle, let it move, let sound come. Free your breath, your movement, your body. Notice what touch your body might want. Say hello to your body and just freeing it up. And you can let emotion come if there's anything stirring in your body, anger, sadness, rage, pleasure, whatever that might be, you can let that come. But we're really like, with the embodied awareness of your spine and your pelvis, we're just freeing up the body. And in your own practice, that could include like you know, your breasts and your genitals or whatever you want to touch, your buttocks, maybe you're in front of the mirror or just being in your body, just really freeing it up. with the intention of raising energy, of really raising your sensuality, freeing up your body so that it can all rise. Let it just do whatever the hell it wants. See if you can lose yourself in the movement and remember to breathe out of your mouth. Noticing what movements you like. It feels really good.
bring any movement to completion and then in your own time coming back down into a comfortable position and here is the time to just be with your energy for five minutes to sit meditate let it absorb or you might if you had more time you might lead into self-pleasure but for now let's just Take a couple of minutes together just to be in your own energy. Wonderful. So, 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 I am, yeah, so we can just take a moment, you can write down these steps in, in just a moment, but all of those steps that we've just done, they could each be like included in a self-pleasure practice as a way to move the energy around your body, as a way to give your mind something useful to do rather than whatever the hell else it's trying to do. So any of those steps could be used, could be pulled out and used on its own. And you can do it as a whole practice. So like moving the energy up your spine and out, you know, all of those things have the potential to, for you to support you in getting more aroused. It might seem um, like you don't know the way, like why would that create more arousal? But the thing is that because our mind, our ego, the self that's like so afraid to let go and surrender and is just like bouncing around, busyness, anxiety, all this other stuff going on, that's the thing that's really getting in the way. So if you're giving your mind something to do that is creating more embodiment and more noticing and you're inviting an erotic then it naturally starts to support you in feeling more and just being more in your body. You may particularly find like the breaths where you breathe like down into your pelvis and, and that way that can, that might be particularly supportive, but I'd be curious to, to try and see, yeah, which, which or all or what works for you. So the intention for this first week is to do, um, so I'm going to tell you, basically I'm going to tell you like the, the full all out what you can do and then you can amend or follow exactly whatever this is your your freedom of choice so if you really want to get like like go like all in and you want to just give it like full all out go i would do that practice every day every day for the next week and i would also do one to three self-pleasure practices so that means trying um this might be totally new to you you may have in the past maybe you've used fantasy or um some sort of outside stimulation to to create arousal in your body but this is an invitation to try something different which is to cultivate this uh, ability for responsive arousal in your body for the potential of your body to respond through stimulation that is like here and now just in your body like full you so this could be kind of radical 
and you're welcome to use like any toys that you like to use um, that's there's no like right or wrongs with that you can bring in whatever you desire and the practice is called orgasmic yoga so it's a way of doing an erotic practice as this like spiritual practice where you're inviting an expansion of self yeah, you're really like saying, all right, I'm going to expand. My habits have been amazing. They've got me so far. And now I'm going to create something new. So that's the intention of orgasmic yoga. And in that you may set a time like half an hour or 45 minutes. And you have this like set time. And um, you consciously like breathe. So you just, just this week, just invite like a bit of breath. Just notice what your breath is doing and invite some breath and perhaps have a go with like one of those steps. Maybe you're inspired to incorporate one of those into a self pleasure and see what it does. You could try all of them throughout the week and see what they do. Um, you might find that after you do this practice is like the perfect time to do a self pleasure practice. So yeah, I'd invite you to play around. But if you do like one to three erotic practices, like erotic touch practices, as and then as a daily thing at this like 15 or 20 minutes of this as a meditation, that would be the ideal. And you can amend as you see fit based on your lifestyle. And, and that is your current yeah your current practice and you wrote down an intention before as we began and i will invite you to after this call to go and bury that in the garden so i know we're going into the we're rising up to full moon at the moment so we're still in the growth phase, but it can go, so it can go into the earth now and just start to become like compost. So you're really like sowing the seeds and you might want to like rip it up. And um, you might want to rip it up and, and uh, make it easier to compost. And I'm going to go through the steps now so you can write them down as I, as I speak them. So then you've got them in your own words and your own diagrams. So yeah, so I'll just go through them now. So the first step is step number one. So with your eyes closed, breathe in through the center of your head, down inside your body to your belly. All the way down to your perineum. Then up the outside of your body, in front of your body, to the center of your head. And then breathe in. So just let you write that down. What a... Oh, so can I repeat the breathing? So yeah, you breathe, um, as you're breathing in, you're visualizing the breath as like going down. As you're breathing in, you're visualizing the breath here going down your body. And then as you breathe out, it's like you're breathing out through your perineum. So you're just imagining or visualizing or intending, whatever works for you basically, that the breath goes out of your perineum and then it goes up like the outside of your body. So you're breathing out and it's kind of like this um, stream of, of breath, of energy is coming out there and then it comes back down. As you breathe in, you're like sucking it back down your body again. Does that make sense? Yeah, the breathing out, yeah, it's like, um, yeah, it's like you're blowing like a, a stream. You're just imagining it coming up. So imagining or intending. 
I sort of tend to see that's the way that I am more visual. I like to see, like make a color or something, but you can see what comes up for you, anything that works for you basically. And then the next step is to do the same. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm just gonna say what the next steps. Yeah, so you can breathe in through your nose and then just out through your mouth. Yeah, so you've got it, you totally got it. In through your nose, out through your mouth. And you're letting your jaw really relax on the out breath. You know, they've got the out breath, the softening. These are great questions, by the way. And the next step is the same as the first one, but instead of through the center of your head, you're going to breathe like in through your heart. So you're imagining you're kind of like sucking in life, you know, from around you. It's like in through your heart. Down to your, your genitals, your pelvis, your belly. And then out the same as like it's coming up and out. And then you're breathing it back in. And it really doesn't have to be precise. You might notice that it's easy for you to focus like on your heart and you just kind of like have a little bit of your awareness on the other parts of your body or the perineum. Um, like the outside, maybe visualizing it coming out is a bit trickier. That's totally okay. You can just be like more focused on your body. Just be like intending that you're breathing in through your heart. Down to your, your genitals, your womb space, your pelvis. And then breathing out. And as you breathe out, everything softens. And then you breathe back in. Yeah, that makes sense. Great. And the next step is to um, just to focus your attention and your breath inside your belly. So you're just hanging out in your belly in that space. You've probably cultivated quite a lot of like energy in there through doing that breathing the first step so you're just hanging out there noticing that really breathing in and out building that up more really like bringing your awareness deep into that place in your belly maybe like you could be imagining that womb space that we had at the start of the call and you're just really building your energy in that space because this is your center of gravity this is your power this is your presence this is your like juicy feminine essence Yeah, so step number three. And step number four is raising samana. So that's breathing the breath up your spine. So you're breathing it up. So you're just you're just imagining that you're breathing from that like womb space and you're inside your body, you're towards the back, towards the back line of your body, just inside your spine. And you're breathing up. It's going up this tube, this channel at like the back line of your body. And then there's like a fountain, like, I don't know, I always seem to see like a golden fountain. I'm like, and it kind of like pours all around and lands on my body. And then you breathe in back in, up again. So you're just kind of like freeing the energy, letting it like explode, fountain out. And then the, the, Next stage is the standing up uh, with your eyes open or closed. So stage number five. And this is where you just want to be like free and spontaneous, like really just like giving yourself this total freedom for like spontaneity, whatever your body wants, total, absolute, just like letting it come. And through this time, you know, this is this, you don't know what could unfold through this. Like what we're doing is we're trying to invite you to like really follow your body through this month. And this kind of practice may seem simple, but it's actually will have ripple effects. So really just allowing your body to just be spontaneous, like really inviting spontaneity. It was like, 
mover that does something or whatever the hell it might be. And yeah, you could use music for sure. And you could even use um, music throughout if you wanted to. Like, yeah, definitely. I think that's a great invitation. It's like, what does my body want for this practice today? And like having, having some music that you can like pop on that's really going to bring the energy that you desire or release um, and allow yourself to be with your body in the way that it is. So there's like two ways, I think, with the using music for this. One is, yeah, that like acknowledging how you're feeling and maybe really allowing that to just be fully expressed. Because remember, we don't need to push anything away. We're always just about like bringing it closer. And then it does its transformation on its own. So we don't need to like put on cheerful music because we feel sad. We're like put on sad music and just like fully get into it and just allow the body to just do it. Uh, Time and again, yeah, so five minutes at each step is great. And you could, but also, you know, we're inviting that invitation of maybe you do three minutes at each step. I wouldn't do less than three minutes, but five is the is ideal. Yeah, and, and then it's the final bit is step number six is sitting down or lying down and just being in silence and just let be, just like let be or you move into a self-pleasure practice from that place and it's really powerful to do this so the 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 way to to, to do this practice is we do like two seven day cycles so you do one seven day cycle now in this group and then you might do another seven day cycle i don't know in a, in a couple of months time or something like that or in a few more weeks time but yeah to do seven days of of this kind of practice is, um, yeah, it's a real opportunity for something in your body. So yeah, I'm curious to see how it goes for you. And I'm wondering if there's anything else to add. I've got my like pages of notes. Um, no, so I wanted to open up for just like sharing, saying hi, we've got a little bit more time here, ask any questions, if anything is coming up. And I'm also conscious that this is being recorded at the moment, but it will actually just be like me in the recording. So what I wanted to do is I'll stop the recording for the question time so that you have like that um, space where you don't have to worry about who's going to watch it later. And so I'm just going to check whether there's anything else that I need to add to that. So if we were like closing this as like the practice for the week. Um, so you've got a practice to do. Well, you've kind of got two. You've got a meditation and you've got the invitation of the erotic. And you're going to go bury your intention in the garden now. <laughs> and uh, let that grow. You can water it. And then throughout this week, it can be really powerful to have like some sort of saying like rolling around in your mind. And I've got one here that you can, you can try. You might already have a different one that feels more relevant for you, but... What I would love to invite you to consider is what pleasure is available in this moment. So just to see what pleasure is available like for me in this moment. So you're looking, you're looking for more pleasure. You're looking to allow yourself to have more pleasure in every little moment throughout your day. And the other side of that is to be kind of like noticing where am I capping my pleasure? So you might just make notes on that as, as it comes along. You're just kind of like being aware. Oh, yeah, I wasn't like allowing pleasure in this moment. What's going on? Why am I? What's going on here for me? And start to notice if there's any like patterns or, yeah, like ideas, structures, things that we, ways that we think we should be or shouldn't be in different places and spaces in your life. That is really, really interesting information. It's like this idea that you have of being, you've got to like be the certain person to be seen as a certain way or whatever that might be. So really playing with that and being like, oh, wow, I'm like not even allowing myself to really have full pleasure in this moment. And I'm like on the phone to somebody or I'm <laughs> in a meeting or I'm eating my food or I'm like, hanging up the washing or whatever it might be. You might literally like just have so many ideas about ways you need to do things. So yeah, that's your intention for the week. So on that note, I'm going to stop the recording and just open up the space.